So this is a 3D animation converted into a 2D animation. Hell motherfucking yeah. So first off, we're just gonna make eight different camera angles. I like to uh, choose a starting frame, which is, so I'm just gonna choose this frame, which is him facing to the, what I would like to call the east. Just gonna press shift A to add a motherfucking camera. And we're just gonna add that, change all the rotations to zeros, 90 on the X. 90 on the X axis, make sure it's all standing up right. And that is perfect. So what we want to do is facing the correct way that I want. So he's facing to the right. That's what I want. So I'm going to um, choose a, you can just choose any value. So I like to choose my negative five. We have to move backwards. And this is going to capture him like this. So let's look in the animation pane. Too narrow. Let's, let's just like render an image. So that's how big he'll be. I think that's a perfect size. Right here I've just rendered an image of this, that. And here's my output property you want output properties of like something small because you might have a bunch of frames and we're going to be animating eight different angles so let's say if you have one animation you're going to animate from eight different angles so that way you can capture all of them let's say like a little walk cycle that could take up a lot more fucking frames so you might want some smaller pixels but if you don't have a lot of frames let's say if you only want to animate from maybe like two different angles or so you could have probably some giant motherfucking resolutions. It's probably good to set it around somewhere like 512 if you have something like that. 512 looks really nice. It looks sharp. You want to make sure your frame start and frame end are right. And down here you want to make sure you select RGBA as your PNG. and Because you want to uh, make sure it's transparent. And I just have a folder named Dude where I'm uh, outputting everything. Uh, you're going to also have to go into Render Properties. And go down to Film and select Transparent. So make sure you have that selected so that way you could actually get a transparent image once you're all rendered. We have our first camera set up and right here you have it boom like uh, just facing uh, east so this will be our angle zero. I like to start off at zero. Yeah. Okay so let's just uh, make about seven other cameras so that way we could have seven different angles. Now I'm not going to rename this it's just like angle one you could see the one at the end two three four five six seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, find our angles so we're going to have a angle of 315 to start off with that will focus this way and so I'm going to move this way like we're moving around a trigonometric circle. So you have our unit of uh, five that's our unit basically for our vector not a unit vector of course but that's just our length for the vector and we want to make sure that it's the same length all the way around so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do use some trigonometry I don't know I just really like cosine you're gonna want a cosine of 45 degrees so you'll get this value this is basically just the value of cosine 45 degrees or sine of 45 degrees they're both the same okay so let's multiply that by five so times that by five boom now you have this value. So this is the value that we're going to use 3.536. And we're going to just gonna keep pasting that. So you just want to make sure you uh, select a negative value first since we're starting from the negative thing. You can already see it's at a better angle. And right here we're going to set x to the to another negative value. And then boom. We got our northwest angle. And this is going to make a perfect circle in the end. You'll see it better then. But right now I'm going to do a similar thing to all the other ones. So let's uh, instead of... Uh, five on this axis we're gonna have negative five on the x-axis and I'll set to that and we're gonna have to do a rotation of 270 and boom now we got that one and we just need to do the same thing for all the angles and right here we're gonna have negative this but positive this and then we're gonna go 45 degrees now we got all of our angles so right now uh, if we clicked render animation we would only get one angle that's because we have not animated our frame so what we want to do since this is the active camera I'll start off with this one so we're down here you're gonna to want to go to your marker you're gonna to want to add marker by pressing the key M or just going to this or and then you also want to bind camera to markers so M and then control B. I'll do M first. So M, you're fine. You're making a marker. And then after that, you bind the camera to that marker by pressing this or control B. So I've just bound that camera to this marker. So it's bound to that angle. So you're not going to see any difference right now because that was already the active camera. But you'll see a difference soon. So let's go to this one. Let's make sure that's the selected and that. That one's an active camera now. You can tell because it's highlighted and this thing is filled in. That triangle, all these are empty. 
And right here, you're going to press M again, and then Control B, and then now you've got that angle going. So you can already see a difference right here. It's not showing the rendering, but I don't know. Uh, you'll see it like when I when I animate. So I'll just do it right here. So like let's say render animation. See, it changed the animation for the rest of it. Okay. So let's do each one and do the a very similar thing. So we're gonna go this frame, add a marker. Whoops, add a marker. Go to this angle, make it the active one. Control bind that camera to that marker, and we're gonna do the same thing for all of them. Back camera, make that camera. Now you got all your motherfucking angles. So let's look at that. So it just rendered all eight directions. But as you notice, there's no lighting on our character, so you're going to want to have some form of lighting. I think the, the, the um, cameras are also too close. So there's a little shortcut to this if you don't want to have to go through and like uh, change all of them all at once. So um, you're going to want to change their, uh, where they are. So um, let's do S. Let's uh, make them a little bit further out. Just a little bit. Not too much, though. See if it changes. Yeah, okay. I didn't change them any of the other frames. Let's render the animation. Now, that looks about perfect. Person. So, uh, what you want to do is you just want to add about six or so lights. and um, Or you can just add any number of lights you want. So, we're going to go, and we're going to add light, and then point, and then just like, um, we're just going to make f six of them. So, five more copies. One, two, three, four, five. So, now we got six lights. I just set it to a value of 2.5 on each axis and just made a little rectangle around the character. Now 2.5 and boom now you got all six directions of lights and when we render it you're gonna see it all lit up and nice. So what you're gonna want to do you're gonna want to find some type of sprite tech, sprite packer so like let's say sprite um, texture packer or something this is like a little application called texture packer I've used this before but I'm not a big fan of it I went ahead and made my own which I could link, uh, there will be a link for that uh, for the GitHub of this in the description. So right here, I'm just gonna go through and show you how to use it, just in case you wanna. So basically, it'll ask you how many images you want per row. You'll just say, I'll say eight, for instance, we're only got one row, and I already have it uh, out, like to the correct file. So I'm gonna, um, basically you find your file where it is. Mine happens to be in C, temp, dude. So I just like selected that. So now I'm in the correct folder, and you, you won't see any files, but you just have to make sure you found the right folder. And then what you'll do is you'll hit open and it'll load all of them in. This is it loading. It'll actually like print out while you're doing it. Uh, but I've only have eight files, so it won't take too long. And you, it'll give you the width of the entire file and the height of the entire file. And then it'll show you the width and height of each image. You need to make sure they're all the same size and that um, they don't have to be squares. It could be um, rectangles or something like different types of things but yeah but make sure they're about like this okay so I'm just gonna output to my desktop I'll just name it dude and boom so as you see they're all in one so that's what we just did right now okay so what we need to do now is we're gonna um, copy this and put it to our project folder which uh, be right here this is my project folder I'll just copy it in there in the main thing because I don't really care about this project. So I already wrote a script. Basically all it does is it has a number of frames that you have. It just has a frame change speed and then it has a little timer that kind of like shifts through them and the little frame count so that way it makes sure it actually loops around. So it just adds a frame timer as a child, does all that. And it sets a wait time, sets a one shot to false. I'll start to true so it's just going to keep restarting once you start it. I'm going to start it right at the beginning, and I'm going to connect this motherfucking shit to this. I should probably do this beforehand, and uh, yeah. And then I'm going to go change frame, and this is where I'm using this variable called frame. And frame, we just add by one. If the frame is equal to the max number of frames, which is this frames, then we just reset frame to zero. And then every single time we uh, call this, we just set the frame to whatever that is. So that way we make sure we're always staying in the bounds of how many frames we get. So there's a better way you could do this, so I'm, like it'll have less er probable errors. So just like make it like not an export variable, make a normal variable set to a type of int, and then just like set the frames to however many H frames you have and however many V frames you have, because each sprite 3D has 
V frames and H frames that it cycles through when it's looking through a whole image. Multiplying them together will give you your max frames that you could have. Okay, so let's add a sprite. And we're going to go with Sprite 3D, not animated Sprite 3D, we're just going to do the normal one. And we're going to select an Atlas texture as its texture. And then we're going to go through Load, the Dude image. And what you need to do is you need to add, you need to like type in the, um, the, the bounds. Let's see, so 256. Boom. Now we have all of them. You can see they're all like nice and lit up on each one. They're a little bit pixelated, but it's not horrible. So we need to make sure in our animation we have 8H frames. And we have those V-frames, and right there, I already have them all set up. And um, yeah, so we have the num number of frames that we have. So even if we add more frames, once we are start adding things like animations, this will keep up with it. Okay, let's uh, look at it. As you see, here's a thing right here. And boom. See, it's all spinning around. You see all eight angles, and it's changing as if it was an animation, but it's actually on the same file. But as you see, you can't see it from the side or anything. So what you gotta do is you want you want to change some flags. I like to put shaded on, and I like to put um, Y billboard. So get that boom. That looks fine. Okay. So now let's say you want to add an animation. What you would do is you would just like take all these small fucking frames and stuff, and you would just like make your animation, and then let's just like move it. Let's just make about like a four frame animation for each one. This makes sense. It's going to be four frames for each one. We're going to have up to 32. So let's say 31. And you'll deselect this, move it another four frames. Whoops. Alright, so uh, we're going to start from this one. And right here, right at the start. We're just gonna um, maybe make a little animation. So, what we need to do is we need to make like a little armature. So we're gonna go Shift A, go to Armature, and we, we want to make a mo fucking bone structure. So what I'm gonna do, yeah, viewport display right here. Make sure it's in the front so that way we can see what we're doing. And this is gonna be a very simple like little animation. So uh, you'll probably want to do a bit better than I am. So let's uh, make it scale down a little bit. Um, all I'm going to do is go into modeling, go right here, and I'm going to uh, press E to extrude, extrude, and then you could uh, make a little skeletal formation right here, put E to extrude again, I'm just going to put like uh, a, not too many limbs, let's move it around G, let's uh, make some arms for it. Sorry to see the angles and stuff. See if you're actually doing it right. Let's move it right here. Let's move it over here. Use about three is a magic number. Okay. Do this round. Boom. 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 Now I'll be very nice. It's probably a horrible animation, but I'm not caring. But yeah, you're going to want to make your basic bone structure. So after that, after you're done making this, so what you got to do is just make sure it's selected. Shift select the cube. You're going to press Control P and then go this. You're going to say armature deform with iMac weights. And that will move the motherfucking thing around. So let's go over here. Let's go to animation, and we're going to pose. It's already in pose mode. So when you move this around, it'll move his arm. So he's gonna be like, bum, 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 bum. okay. Let's just make a little simple animation. Well, this is gonna be our first frame. So we're gonna just gonna select the entire thing. So right now we're not gonna insert key frames into the timeline yet. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to the screen where I have everything selected and insert key frames. So press I and then uh, do it by location, rotation, and scale. Because I'm gonna be changing all those motherfuckers. Make sure you press record as you do this. So that way you can keep track of where all of them are. All right, so when I press control right here, it'll actually keep that. When I do it right here, I'll do that. Let's control A and go this one. Copy, 
Face that shit. And boom. So we're just going to basically copy these frames. So let's say you have your whole animation ready. So we're going to basically copy all these frames. Make sure everything's selected. And then just like copy, paste, paste, paste. And just paste them for each camera angle. Trust me, this is a lot easier than normal animation. Holy motherfucking shit. But yeah. Like, I would love to do this in normal animation, but you wouldn't be able to do that. So see this? Let's play it. Looks really stupid, but fuck it, that's our animation. Boom, motherfucker, boom, motherfucker, boom. Bam, motherfucker, bam, motherfucker, bam. Okay. So now we got all that set up. So we got our animation. And all you have to do now is do the same thing. Hit render, and then render animation. Okay, now we got our animation going. And it's going to be quite packed in here. So let's go to temp, dude, and now we have all 32 frames of our animation. And after that, we're going to use the sprite packer again. So what's nice about this is, um, well, first we're going to still have, we're going to have four images per row this time because that's the length of our animation. And then we're we're going to um, it'll actually remember my program will remember the last folder you used, and then you're just going to hit open, and they'll load all them in. As you see, it's 1,024 for width this time, but 2,048 for height. That's because there's eight different rows, because um, reason eight different angles. So it'll be like uh, eight times whatever resolution you use for each image. And we're just going to export to the desktop again. Well, I could just export to that, um, to that folder I was using. So instead, we're going to go to this PC, go our D, go to my um, folder. Let's see. Let's do... Whoops. Yeah, I'm supposed to go into here. Dude. Okay, now it's all fucked up on there. But all we gotta do is go into here, change our atlas thing, set it to zero. That's what I like to do. So now it'll give you the actual resolution. And I'll, whoop. I'll set this one to zero. And that'll give you the 2048. And now we got all that. Okay. So we need to change our uh, H frames to four and our V frames to eight. And now we got that going. And watch as it changes through all the angles. So you're gonna see it like flap around. This is going at 0 0.75. I can make the animation a little bit faster just by doing this. So let's say about 0 0.25. Let's make it about 12 frames, May 16 frames per second. See, as you see, it's all flopping and flipping around now. And we, yeah, that's how it works. That's what's cool about Blender too is it also animates the areas around that. It'll actually change the other vertices. So it changes his whole body. It looks like he's really trying to flap those motherfucking wings. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. All right, so I hope this helped. I hope you all have a wonderful motherfucking day.